So unless you're living under a rock, you've heard of what's happening with Blue Lock Season 2. Yeah, this is real. The animation is no longer animation, it's just mation. Considering how Blue Lock Season 1 was pretty popular and the manga was the best-selling manga of 2023, outplacing big names like Jujutsu Kaisen and One Piece, it raises a big red flag. What happened to the animation? So of course, I wanted to find out what went wrong, so I did a deep dive investigation on what happened to the animation. And what I found, I realized it might just be over for Blue Law. Even the most hopeful person would get sad about what I'm gonna say, because this affects not just the current episodes of Blue Lock, but the rest of the series, even the U20 arc, and we have new evidence to prove it. But before that, we have to find out what's so bad about the animation in the first place. It really first started with the trailer of season two dropping about one week before it started airing. And with the trailer dropping, people's hopes started dropping. They gave us a sneak peek of what's to come, and this is where the rumors of PNG lock started happening. Goals, characters, everything just looked like PNGs. At the least bit, it looked very odd, but people were still holding on to hope because it's just a trailer we can't judge too quickly the hope meter was about 80 percent at this point in time eventually the first episode released and the hope meter actually increased this was a comeback episode for them and they definitely delivered they were gassing up the characters the lighting looked nice even adding anime only scenes we gotta give credit when credit is due they hyped up everyone with an amazing opening good visuals and a cliffhanger to get everyone watching for the next episode there was really nothing to complain about so everyone who still believed in the animation after the the trailer started clowning on the people who doubted it but oh boy was everyone in for a treat in the second episode this was the start of the end in terms of animation the first episode gave us all false hope having us in the first half and then dropping that abysmal second episode as everyone watched this episode it progressively became worse and worse like you can't make this up everything from the kickoff to the goals to the 1v1s even just a regular movement became worse the first game of the new season an important match to select the blue lock starting 11 and wow what exactly am i looking at here because this is not even a goal there is just effects around a picture and the animation tends to do that a lot to make it seem like there is movement for example almost every single scene has speed lines to create this illusion that the png is moving even scenes where they don't need any movement like it'll just be isagi thinking they just made the screen wavy to add extra effects it must have been opposite day in the blue lock office because every time they needed movement there was no movement it's actually crazy crazy how many times you can count them using PNGs instead of actual animation. They're just dragging pictures across the screen here. Keep in mind, people watch the anime rather than read the manga because they want to see these moments come to life. That's the whole point of animation. They want to see movement, but at this point, the manga has the same amount of movement as the anime, maybe even more. You know how crazy of a statement it is to say the manga has more animation than the anime? That is not an easy feat. It rivals a record of Ragnarok and seven deadly sins level of animation. In fact, after episode 2 aired, the Blue Lock manga search results went up. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. The crazy thing is the flat picture movement is not the only bad things that we got from this episode. There was one time where they used a page turn transition to switch scenes. This had me confused and dead at the same time. Were they trying to go for a faithful adaptation of the manga flipping the page for us? Did they unlock a new CapCut cut transition? This is something you'd see a 5th grader use in Google Slides. Your grandma can probably use this transition. Hell, I'm doing it right now. What caused them to do this? It really just makes no sense because they could have just left it out and it would have looked perfectly fine. Characters, specifically Shido, looked different in almost every single scene. Genuinely, who is this? This is the character they've done the most dirty because every single goal he had was just dull. It was an actual PNG. For a character who was hyped up at the end of the first season, showing him off like this is just tragic because his goals are some of the most visually appealing in the manga. And since we just mentioned the first season, almost all the problems I mentioned for season 2 were the complete opposite for that one. Season 1 actually felt animated. When you compare the two, you can see how fluid season 1 is. Every block, trap, or goal had a lot of movement behind it. But they kind of messed up the auras and lighting, which season 2 actually does pretty well, so it's almost like they took one step forward and two steps back. Considering that this is a 
football anime and you need actual movement to make it feel like that, focusing on the auras or fancy colors doesn't really make sense. This isn't color lock. So after that, it's no doubt the viewers packed their bags and the hope was at an all-time low, but there was still one shining star, one more thing that gave everyone hope, and that, of course, is the U20 match. Rumors and ideas passed down from everyone that if the third selection is bad, that must mean they're saving the animation for the U20 match. The whole point of the season. I mean, it's in the title. So everyone held on to hope, including myself, that one of the greatest arcs in sports manga would be faithfully adapted. But as I kept looking, more and more of my hope was lost. Why is the animation like PNGs? Why was it worse than season one? What actually happened? Everyone asked all these questions, and as I tried to find a solution, it led me to one of the most disappointing and sad answers of all time. But that's why we're all here, right? What actually happened? The first thing I found out was like all things, it had to do with money. Now you'd expect with season one being successful and a movie that was an obvious cash grab, basically a recap movie, you'd think they'd have more money to spend it on season two. A higher budget or more money means that you can hire more animators, which means a bigger team, which also means less work on fewer people. Obviously, there are certain restrictions, but that is mostly the case. And a basic economic principle, it's called increasing returns to scale. I really didn't think I'd use that word in a blue lock video, but that isn't the case at all, or at least they just didn't spend the money they made on season two. And we get most of this evidence from an actual animator who worked on blue lock. So this isn't just me going on a whim here. It was actually confirmed by someone who worked on season two, that they had a low pay and the production committee just cared about making money. Now, I'm not going to say the animator's name or show any of it on screen to respect their privacy, but it really tells you about where the production committee's priorities are. Rather than focusing on good animation or a good product, they want to cut down and cut as many corners as possible, even if that means making the animation worse, just to increase their profit margin. Obviously, this would result in the slideshow animation that we see today, and it's because the production committee knows people like Blue Lock. They'll still watch it regardless of the animation. Honestly, a smart but douchey move because they're taking advantage of the fans. Blue Lock is carried by the plot, characters, voice acting, and OSTs, and not by the animation. So even if they animated it terribly, they know people will still watch it for the plot and other stuff. It just sucks because animation is what makes an anime an anime. They're just not giving the new season what it deserves, instead just caring about cutting corners, paying the animators a low wage just to make more money. But even then, it still doesn't make that much sense when you think with more than one brain cell. Short term, they might make more money because of profit margins, but long term, they lose fans, credibility, a possibility of a third season where they can make more money? I personally don't know what's going on behind the scenes there. I'm pretty sure everyone doesn't, and obviously, it's easier said than done, but I just think there's no excuse for approving of this horrible animation if you weren't just thinking about money. Not only that, the same person who worked on the episode who worked on Blue Lock explained way more about season two's bad animation and this is why everyone has lost hope for Blue Lock, even the U20 match. And when I'm talking about everyone, I mean everyone. Even Blue Lock's own directors for the anime left the project. The season one director left the series, the episode Nagi director left the series, and the director for season two left the series. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that we are only three or four episodes into the season. So not only are we just three episodes into the new season and the director left, this could possibly be a reason why season two looks completely different than season one's animation. The old director quite literally left. But the reason why the animation has been bad and unfortunately will continue to be bad for the whole season is that management is giving them a little time to animate. The animators talked about the conditions they had to work in. Being rushed for anything isn't a great feeling, but it felt like they wanted them to work at some impossible speed. And they also had to start scenes from scratch, all the way from zero. So the animators were rushed, and 8-Bit isn't as big of an animation studio as something like UFO Table, which animates Demon Slayer. Whoever the production committee is, they're basically shoving 50 people's work onto very few people. Because again, they're not as big of a studio as other animes. And the worst part of it all, this genuinely gave me brain damage, I'm sorry, but the production committee, quote, eliminated as many frames as possible from the animators to meet the deadline. So on top 
of being rushed to hand animate scenes, they cut out said scenes to meet deadlines. What the f your hard work got replaced with actual PNGs that everyone in the community doesn't like. Of course, anyone would be mad. So that's why we have the choppy PNGs instead of actual animations. Because of these hard working conditions and a limited time schedule, our animator quite literally left the studio. He abandoned ship and for good reason. I would have jumped ship a long time ago too. Our animator was originally supposed to work on five episodes at the same time but quit after seeing the production of episode two and if he quit i'm pretty sure some other people would quit as well it's not like this is the first time that this has happened in anime where people had to rush animation or overwork employees for deadlines most recently a popular one i could think of was mappa and jujitsu kaisen season two episode 17 was notorious as an incomplete almost 30 percent completed episode that still had to air due to tight deadlines for blue lock specifically if you put two and two together as more time goes on and these conditions get harder i'm gonna assume more people are gonna quit or we're just gonna get way more rushed out content because of the way they handle these things the animator who worked on episode two and came out giving us all this information said he knew the final result would end up in a disaster and we went over the many reasons why it is a disaster but man even the animator knew we were cooked and no blame to the animators as well it's a horrible working condition and nobody would argue otherwise this is just a major case of quantity over quality and rushing out staff to meet deadlines and i think that's why season two even the u20 match at least animation wise is pretty much over there's no hope and with an actual animator of the show literally saying that it's not gonna be good there was pretty much no copium left here because we know that they'll cut down as much as possible to make as much money as well as just the whole animation situation it's not just for these earlier episodes just this whole thing is really messed up with the directors leaving animators leaving and we obviously don't know what's going on behind the scenes so let's not point any fingers at any specific studio or production committee because we don't know for sure anyways that about wraps it up for why we shouldn't have any hope for better animation in the u20 even me who held on to the straws of hope the sliver of hope that we had has given up thank you so much if you made it to the end it took a very long time to get all this info into one place so i'd very much appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button blue lock is still an amazing series plot wise and i'm still gonna watch it and make content on it the manga is actually so much better and at its peak right now so now's the perfect time to join the community i'll leave as many sources as possible in the description of the video like the animator statement proof of directors leaving all that stuff anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll see y'all in the next one